Hey Astro Heads, Mike Phillips here. I have a really large 14 inch telescope that needed a custom cooling unit and I like to know if it needs to run or not. So I built a cool indoor outdoor dual temperature sensor thermostat that might help you in your projects. So here's a little bit about how it works. The cooling unit I have some other details on but essentially it's got a aluminum plate covered with uh, plexiglass and some peltier coolers underneath or thermoinductor coolers so it all runs off of a 12 volt power supply that neatly by the way runs through the central mount of my ioptron mount down at the bottom those two black and white leads code to a 12 volt old server power supply the key to making all this work instead of guessing when i need to turn it on and off is this cool zigbee power plug Zigbee is neat because you can integrate it into Home Assistant. Home Assistant, if you don't know, is a open source program that allows you to do various home automation, including integrate to Zigbee. So this is important because I can turn the power on and off, not just with the button, but also remotely via the Raspberry Pi Home Assistant. The other key piece to making this work, if you see these uh, colored wires coming out of here are the temperature sensors. One of the temperature sensors, again, following the green Cat5 cable, runs up through the central mount here, and it connects via this nice little RJ45 for ease of use to a small temperature sensor inside of the telescope pressed up against the mirror. So that's my mirror temperature. Now on the other side here, this is the same thing, it's duplicated. Uh, I'll give you the details on this, is the outdoor or the air temperature. Home Assistant can read both of these values, compare the values, and it knows when, via the administrator myself, to turn the power on to the Zigbee, which will run the cooling unit. It's fully automated. Let me show you how it works. Hey everybody. I'd like to take you on a quick tour of my Home Assistant dashboard that you can see. It's uh, not meant to be a comprehensive deep dive into Home Assistant, but this is the dashboard that I use to control the custom cooling unit that I use on my 14-inch telescope. Uh, primarily of interest here is the delta temperature that is read from the Raspberry Pi that the Home Assistant installation is running on, and a button that I have here that will activate the power to the cooling unit itself. So really the crux of it is reading the temperature values for the mirror as well as the ambient air temperature, which I just call the astral cart. Um, it computes the delta temperature and then we evaluate that temperature based upon some predefined thresholds that I have. So what I said was I'll turn the unit off after it goes to uh, a temperature difference of negative seven. Now the temperature difference is essentially saying that the mirror temperature is colder than the air temperature and then I can turn the unit off so it's cooled sufficiently. This unit, uh, this automation turns the temperature controls on so if the temperature of the mirror is too hot then I need to actively cool it and that will turn this one on. So essentially the automations are fairly simple so if you look at the off one it simply says that if the delta temperature is below negative 0.7 meaning the mirror is cold enough for a duration of two minutes and this prevents it from kind of uh, bouncing up and down from a temperature perspective which uh, we'll see in the later section uh, then go ahead and turn the it's, a Z, it's essentially a zigbee plug it turns the the zigbee plug off that's all that that one does and then conversely to automate the turning on it does effectively the same thing where it says if the delta temperature is too hot, the mirror is too hot for two minutes, turn the unit on. That's essentially all it does. So let's take a look at how it works in real life. So let's take a quick example of how the cooling works in action. At the beginning of this session, I turned it on manually and it ran for a little while and shut itself off via this automation here. A little while later, it started to warm again, either from the mirror losing more of its heat to the edge where it would feel warmer by the temperature sensor's placement, 
informed by the fact that the air temperature dropped too rapidly. The automation turned itself on. And the danger here is that I can't really observe while it's on, but I think that you can just manually shut that off. And it only ran for about nine minutes, as you can see in the timestamps here. I blasted it again a little bit before I started to observe, just to clear some tube currents out. But let's take a look at what it actually looks like by the temperature graphs. So I graph everything in Grafana here, and you can see from the beginning when I turned it on manually, the brown or orange yellowish is the mirror temperature here, and this is the air temperature here. So you can follow the timestamps. It shuts itself off about here, and the mirror starts to rebound a little bit. So it must have been some wind here for the air temperature to fluctuate quite a bit like this. But the mirror sort of plateaus here, and then at this point here they start to deviate a little bit more. The mirror temperature goes down as I kick the cooling back on automatically when it runs for about nine minutes and then shuts off here. And they remain fairly close to each other for the rest of the night. Let's blow this up so it's a little easier to see. So here's the initial run when I turned it on. And you can actually see the uh, delta temperature here it starts at about four degrees because I just yanked it out of a hot garage. Then by the time it cools, it kicks itself off, it has to stay under a certain threshold of, uh, I think, minus 1.2 or something like that for over two minutes. And then it turns itself off. Then it runs idle for a little while until the temperature gap grows again here. And then when, when it, the automation turns it back on, it kicks itself back on after 105 temperature difference for two minutes as well. So when it runs again, it starts at a pretty warm temperature, cools itself down. So this is the delta temperature again here in green on the bottom. And then on the top, you can see the actual temperatures individually. I want to show you one last thing as we look at the uh, sort of last little idle imaging time here. So this was the only time I spent imaging, which was only about a half an hour because the seeing was pretty poor despite having pretty good mirror temperatures. So I'm going to thumb back through these. I want to show you one neat thing here. What I noticed is on the humidity side here, so the air humidity is in blue, and when the cooling unit runs, the mirror humidity actually drops tremendously. I don't know if it's because of the airflow, of the cool air flowing across it, and then as soon as it cuts off, these little shark fins here. So here's where it's, the cooling unit's off, and then when it turns back on, it plummets again and then sharks again, and when I ran it for one minute manually, at the, uh, just to clear the tube currents, it, it does another little dip there and then it comes back. Anyway, I thought that was neat, you can kind of see that throughout the night. Um, but hope you enjoyed this and uh, get inspired for some projects of your own. Mm -hmm.